In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up mid-side EQ or mid-side processing. What this essentially comes down to is separating whatever is in the center, whatever is common to left and right in your stereo field, and making that function on one channel, while on a separate channel we can listen to what's happening in the far left and far right. And then what we're going to do is apply a slightly different EQ to what's grounded in the middle to what's on the very outer edges of our frequency spectrum, or that's called the side. I'm going to do this using a free plugin that you can download on the internet from Vox Voxengo. The plugin is called Voxengo MSED. It's free and it's quite a good plugin, so I suggest downloading it and installing it. So I've successfully installed the Voxengo MSED VST3 plugin. What we're going to do here is a little bit of a workaround using tricks within Cubase. We're going to create two effects channels and we're going to actually send our stereo output to those two effects channels. And one effects channel is going to be using the Voxengo plugin to extract just the mid and the other will be extracting just the sides. And then they'll sum back together and go to the stereo output. Let's go ahead and add two effects channels. I can change the count to two. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to select the effect from Spatial and Panner. That's where it just kind of resided when I put it in. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit Add Track. And then I'll see down here, I've got my two channels containing MSED. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these Mid and Side, like so. The next step is to basically bus everything to Mid and Side first before it goes to my Stereo Master Output. The way we're going to do that is using Effect Sends. Let me close those plugins down and I'm going to go to each track now and I'm going to select the track, go to Inspector, and I'm going to change the output to No Bus. That's what I'm going to do for all of these. Once I'm in the Mix Console, I'm just going to go through each one of my tracks and I'm going to make sure that I have No Bus selected for the routing as the output for each track. What this essentially is going to do is make it so that, at least for the time being, there's no sound anywhere, right? Now, I want to just take you through this process step by step so you really understand how the signal processing is working. I don't want to uh, confuse you or make more work for you, but it's really important just to, to get your head wrapped clearly around what we're doing here. I've got basically none of the tracks going to an output right now, so that when I play, although I can see them in the faders, there's no sound coming through. Now, I want to send everything to the mid and side, okay? So I can't set this to go to two outputs simultaneously, but I can use sends to do that. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to my track view here, and I'm going to select the track, go to my sends, and here I'm going to do a send to mid. Enable that. I'm just going to leave it at zero. And you can hear I'm already starting to get sound again. I'm going to send this one to side. The sound hasn't changed at all. That's because currently the processing on mid and side are exactly the same. So I have hi-hat closed channel going no output to the stereo master. It's not going directly to the stereo master. Instead, it's only having a send effect that is going to my mid and side channels, which are these two effects channels I have down here. And you can see them coming up there. Then the mid and side channels, respectively, those are going to the stereo out. So I've kind of created a middleman. I've made a middleman track the mid and side. They're both getting the same input from each channel. And I've got, so far I've only done this for the hi-hat closed. I'm going to go ahead and do it for all my channels. And then I'll come back. Now that I've got the mid and side send effects set up for every channel and kind of using it as a middleman before it gets to my output bus, I want to make sure that the mid channel is only representing the mids and the sides are only representing the sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inserts for, I'm going to pick the MSED plugin here on my mid channel, and I'm going to go ahead and click side mute. Okay, so on the mid one, I'm just muting the sides, and you guessed it, on the side one, I'm going to be muting the mids. So now I basically have a setup here where the mids are represented on the mid channel and the sides are represented on the side channel. I want to make sure that both of these effect channels are going out to the master bus, right? So I'm just going to choose that there. Now when I mute the sides, I can hear only what's happening in the far left and far right. In other words, it's the difference, what's not in the middle. That's what we're listening to when we solo the side. And we can hear how if we go to the plugin and we were to unmute the mids, suddenly there's a lot of stuff in there and you can actually see this graphical representation of what we're hearing. Likewise, when we go to the side, and we do just that, 
go ahead and unmute everything and I want to look at both of these plugins simultaneously. When I load up both of my plugins right next to each other, I can see that the way it's figured is that my mid channel has the sides muted, my side channel has the mids muted, and when I play it, I'm getting these very obvious distinctions. I'm getting a purely vertical and a purely horizontal display for my stereo output. Now, going through and adding all of these different configurations can be kind of a bore and a headache. I definitely recommend you do it just so you get familiar with what's happening and it'll help you learn Cubase's interface a little better. But I have set up a project that contains all of this set up for you so you can download it along with this lecture and just kind of get a quick start and know that everything's set up correctly. Okay, so in the next lesson, we're going to actually do a little bit of mid-side EQ, and then we're going to look at how does our stereo field look and kind of get a sense about what a good stereo field should look like in some of these monitors.